and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your weekly MEM Edge show where each and every Friday afternoon we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. And I know I say this a lot, but it has been quite a week. Lots to cover. As usual, we are going to go ahead, drill down, take a look where are the markets currently. For those of you following closely, you'll know uh, new all-time highs again for the S&P and NASDAQ, but we'll get more into that. Also, China has been preceding the U.S. in their stock market rally. Of course, their recovery phase did start a bit earlier, and there are some top stocks that uh, I want you to be aware of. So we are going to go ahead and cover some of these ADR stocks, Chinese names listed in the U.S. Also, an explosive week for software stocks. What's next? We're going to take a look uh, at historical precedent versus what occurred this week in that group. Uh, also, how to play. There's been a renewed recovery rally this place uh, this week after about a week and a half to two week uh, kind of a go nowhere environment. So I'm going to share with you ways that you can quickly get in front of possible candidates. We're, of course, talking about industrials and financials, uh, among other areas. Also, I do always like to take a look at important news items that did take place this week. You'll always want to be aware because this backdrop will provide you some sort of framework as you make your investment decisions. So first up, we did see U.S. durable goods orders up 11% in July, much higher than anticipated. So good news there. Uh, however, consumer confidence did drop this week. Uh, and that was married with July home sales that hit a 13 year high. So overall with these two bullets, you can see that we're on a steady path as far as the economic recovery, although other elements are holding uh, consumer confidence back. Fed Chair Powell spoke this week, very relevant. His comments were overall positive. He talked about keeping interest rates close to that zero level for quite some time. Uh, now, we did also on that same day get unemployment claims, and they did come in above 1 million. Again, this is weekly new unemployment claims. So a little bit of mixed news there that had the markets waffling a bit on Thursday. And today we did see consumer spending rising uh, while consumer sentiment also improved. Now I know it's confusing consumer confidence and consumer sentiment. They are in essence very similar. They are two different uh, surveys that go out. So a little bit mixed on that front as well, but overall constructive as far as, again, the economic numbers that we're seeing. Uh, U.S. and China also mixed signals earlier in the week. Uh, they did move forward with a virtual over-the-sea uh, handshake, if you will. They moved forward with their phase one trade deal. However, tensions remain. Trump in his closing republic uh, his nomination for the Republican Party did say, cite that he was going to uh, hold China accountable for COVID-19. So really very mixed. Uh, generally, uh, overall, though, it, this uncertainty as it relates to the U.S. and China could come back to increase volatility in the markets. So that's the market's backdrop as it relates to the news. Let's drill down, take a look at some of these charts, see where we are as far as the S&P 500. This is a daily price chart. I like to put these simple moving averages up here because ideally you want this broader market as well as the other indices to be trading above this shorter term green 10 day simple moving average while the average is in an uptrend. And uh, this goes back to other prior bullish periods taking us back to 2019 prior to the bear market. Similar dynamics in indicating that we are in a very confirmed uptrend. And this is taking place on volume, which gives it a nice amount of uh, 
confidence, if you will, in the sense that it will improve even further. I apologize, I'm just gonna update this with the stochastics, another momentum indicator, and they are up here above this 50 in positive territory. Now, the RSI also trending upward above 50, however, it is overbought, not overly concerning at this time, but worth noting at some point in time we can anticipate a pullback and those of you that are subscribers to my MEM Edge report you know that we've noted this and we will keep you apprised as far as the broader markets uh, really near term prospects. So let's go ahead and drill down further we want to pull the curtain back so to speak take a look at some of these sectors to get a sense of where the strength is. And the reasoning here is from my work, uh, as many of you may know, my background with William O'Neill and Company, founder of Investors Business Daily. We want to be trafficking in and also uh, participating in these stronger areas of the market. So that's the relevance here. I've gone ahead and uh, this added each of the 11 S&P 500 sectors and at an RSI indicator sorted it by descending so up here upper left quartile is where your relative certainly right now strength is as compared to your weaker areas down in this lower right quartile these are two month daily price charts of these various sectors so we can see technology really up here in the forefront. This is a group that led us out of the bear market. It did have a little bit of a sideways, a pullback sideways move here in the beginning of August, but pleased to see that this uptrend is very powerfully back in place. And these, uh, a lot, we'll discuss precisely why, where the relative strength is within technology because super strong growth prospects remain for uh, the technology sector. Consumer discretionary, really another, uh, I would call one of the three horsemen that have been driving this market higher. Early recovery, all about digital sales, and those companies that have conformed to new buying habits in this lockdown period uh, among U.S. consumers. So a very confirmed uptrend there, uh, lots of underlying strength. And then also uh, we would want to take a look at XLC. This is communication services and it's all about uh, internet related stocks. This big gap up. Uh, Facebook is a big over 22% component of XLC. That stock, for those of you that subscribe to my MEM Edge report, will know uh, we had it highlighted as a buy going into this week, and it, the stock is up 10%. Uh, so that's a big uh, reason, but there are other underlying names as the internet remains very relevant to this current pandemic as far as keeping people connect it. And then of course we can drill down. I talked about that recovery rally having new legs, so to speak. And this is XLI, the industrial sector. And this is a cyclical area of the markets and it will tend to lead or certainly perform well during periods of recovery. You can go back to the uh, most recent 0709 bear market and you'll see the relevance of industrial stock stocks and we can see that they did hit a high here in the beginning of August pulled back and then this week we are seeing a nice re-emergence the industrial group is up three percent a little bit less the S&P was up 3.3 percent but nonetheless uh, interesting and we'll talk about ways to get behind some of the stocks that are driving that industrial group higher another area worth noting is financials another cyclical area having a little bit tougher of a time here because it's continuing to find resistance at this upward of downward trending 200 day simple moving average that's this blue line so until we break up above that on considerable volume uh, we could be in for some uh, difficulties but the group was up 4.3 percent this week and we'll get into the areas within financials as well as some of the reasons behind that pickup there so those are the sectors and the areas that are highly relevant at this 
point in time, let's go ahead and move forward and drill down even further beyond those sectors. Again, always with an eye toward where the strength is, where are those money flows so that you can capitalize on it. So what we have are the each of the broader market indices, and then I've added some of the more powerful names. Certainly within tech, we can look at semiconductors. We're also going to take a look at the software group, uh, transportation stocks, banking, and uh, so on. Again, RSI sorted by uh, relative outperformance or strength. So let's take a look. This first group up here at the forefront are transportation stocks and they did have another very good week. Uh, I'll tell you a lot of this uh, does have to do with that recovery uh, trade if you will uh, and it has to do there is one other area that we're going to cover that I didn't mention and that's the fact that Abbott Labs came out with a very relevant announcement this week that really impacted this recovery grouping so we're going to get into that as well as areas within transportation but let's go ahead and move forward beyond the broader market indices because I have to share with you this software ETF, IGV, is the ticker symbol. For those of you that follow my show or my MEM Edge report, you'll know this is a very important area, certainly from our work. And again, one of the first areas out of this bear market, all about cloud computing, uh, processing data quickly, keeping people connected. And while the overall group did waffle a bit here for about six weeks. Uh, there were outperformers within the area, but this week, big gap up. This IGV software index or ETF was up seven and a half percent, and that is huge. We're going to get into why precisely this group gapped up and how you can play the strength in software stocks. Let's take a look because I would be remiss without pointing out another development this week, if you will, and that is uh, the treasury. Treasury yields, we did see a pretty significant uptick here. This is a daily chart of the 10-year treasury yield. Uh, two areas that are impacting that. One is Fed Chair Powell's comments regarding inflation, the fact that it will be uh, coming upon us, and that really uh, boosted the shares of TNX or actually of the uh, bonds that went down in price while these yields increased. A pickup back here was because of the uh, Fed, um, actually the uh, Treasury having an auction, and there was oversupply relative to demand pulled back but now we're up above so uh, this is really going to impact bank stocks higher interest rates are generally favorable for those bank stocks because they lend at a higher rate and uh, they can have higher profit margins uh, relative to that. And then one other area that we can take a look at that I talked to you was uh, the banking stocks. This is KRE, Regional Banking, and we can see that it's coming around here nicely. Uh, ideally, from my work, I like to see the banks already breaking up above resistance. Uh, my MEM Edge report, we've identified two stocks that have proven to be leadership names because they have already overcome that resistance, but they're also very sound fundamentally as well. So those were some of the highlights I wanted to make sure that we covered as far as where that relative strength is. And then from here, we will go ahead and talk about how you can capitalize that. So on that, we're going to take a brief break and look into that when we get back. During every bull market, there are a select set of stocks that far outpace their peers. They trade much higher and much faster than the rest of the markets. The reason? These select stocks have a set of characteristics that history has proven are common among big winning stocks. My easy to follow course will teach you the skills of a lifetime so you can learn how to uncover and then successfully trade these fast moving stocks. Take my five part course now by going to meminvestmentresearch.com for this limited time offer. And 
And we are back. I'm going to start this segment out by discussing and reviewing some of the bigger heavyweight names that have really impacted not only the software grouping, but also the S&P 500. This stock is CRM, a very well-known name. The stock gapped up hugely. They did come out with earnings that just blew away the uh, numbers that were estimated. 108% year-over-year growth, 115% above estimates. So let's take a look here because we had a couple of dynamics taking place. One was the stock was rallying going into the release of their earnings, and that was because analysts were raising estimates. So um, while we're at the tail end of earnings season, I will tell you that that is a bullish signal. And the volume characteristics on this gap up are really tremendous. They do point to further upside, but again, we're, we'll take a look at some names that were gapping, that gapped up earlier this earnings season to uh, help you devise or develop a plan. Uh, but before we do that, let's just take a quick look at a way, another way as far as uh, developing a plan relative to this particular stock uh, as opposed to historical precedent. This is a one hour price chart. So if you participated in this gap up, you're, and certainly we did get oversold, your RSI is still in positive territory. This MACD downward trending crossover is really just reflecting this pause that the stock has taken relative to that big two-day gap up. So we are still in positive territory, so you can stay with that stock. As far as near-term sell signals, that would be an RSI breaking down below 50 on this one-hour chart, price breaking below these simple moving averages in line with a negative MACD. So super near-term, still in good standing, but let's take a look at a couple of other names. Uh, and Salesforce also is going to be added to the Dow Jones Industrial Average next week, so that's been a real boost. This is Workday, W-D-A-Y, another earnings-related gap up huge. Let's take a look because I do want to be sure and mark this up for you because this occurrence is really historically very bullish. So we're going to take a look at uh, the actual numbers for Workday, 91% year-over-year growth. They are a cloud-based uh, human resources platform. And we can see also that these huge volume characteristics, all about history, uh, telling us that this gap up breakout of this eight-week, uh, seven-week base is very, very constructive for the stock RSI, MACD up there in positive territory. Another name where you can drill down if you are a shorter term trader to those shorter intraday charts. Another pretty well-known software stock that reported earnings this week, Intuit, 83% increase in sales, another base breakout. Uh, that did occur prior to the release of their earnings, 30% above estimates, and then uh, they were being upgraded going into earnings. This is another phenomenon that I spoke to you about as being bullish, although not everyone is suited to buy into earnings. It can get tricky, but I will say that that is constructive. So we can compare that to some other software names that are not faring quite as well. This is SPLK. They missed on their revenues, but certainly had that gap up. So we'll keep an eye on that one. OKTA, uh, the company came out with uh, good numbers, but they do derive 11% of their revenues from the hospitality restaurant industry. Management was very murky in their guidance going forward. So that stock pulled back. Now let's take a minute take a look at some other stocks that have gapped up earlier in earnings season to get a sense of what you may anticipate for these gaps up. This is Taiwan Semiconductor. Uh, in addition to strong earnings, they also had uh, important news that came out. So we had a multi-day gap up before and take a look at the volume characteristics. But what I'm finding is that uh, a number of these stocks do tend to kind of reset 
they are consolidating this big expansive move. You can certainly stay with the stock. RSI remains positive. Again, this is simply talk, uh, telling you or highlighting that consolidation, but the MACD is still positive. Let's take a look at another uh, gap up that came through uh, earlier in the earnings season. We can take a look at, oh my gosh, I'm trying to get everything straight, but this is Eric and ERIC is another company that came out with uh, very strong numbers, huge growth, all about 5G penetration. Then they had subsequent news announcements of contracts. So we did here again have a multi day gap up, but more recently really just hitting the reset or consolidation uh, button. And that is very common. We can go back to this May surge, kind of a resting period before another leg up. Uh, but also I do want to share with you some stocks that gapped up that were able to advance higher and we can just take a look at the differences. This is Gibraltar Steel, R-O-C-K. Stock came out with great numbers and we can see the volume pickup. So uh, the relative difference here is R-O-C-K had about a two week continuation upward move. Uh, I would tell you that it has a lot to do with the group that the stock is a part of. This is all about during this uh, early August recovery within these construction related steel stocks. So you do want to pay attention to the backdrop of the group that that stock is a part of. BYD was another gap up that uh, right here, late July on their earnings. And we can see the nice steady progression beyond that, pulling back to this 21 day, poised for another leg up. So that is quite constructive there. And then ENPH, see if we can take a look at this. ENPH is an alternative energy stock that also gapped up here on earnings and again, found support at this upward trending 10 day simple moving average. So we can see that the stock is continuing to be in an uptrend and overall the improvement in those three names that continued to advance was about uh, seven to 10 or actually 12%. So nice significant gains, the stock gaps up, pulls back very orderly to that upward trending 10 day simple moving average. Let's take a look. I talked to you about the move into uh, Chinese stocks and we can start out by looking at MCHI. This is the iShares ETF just to really uh, show the pronounced improvement certainly this week where this particular uh, ETF broke out of the space after gapping up positive RSI and MACD. And the real winner, if you will, within or among uh, China's sub uh, industry groupings is CQQQ. And this is the China Technology ETF. So we can see how this is poised to very nicely break out of this two month base because we can see it really got exuberant. It did get ahead of itself, pulled back quite nicely. So we very well may see another leg up for these China technology stocks. The CQQQ, uh, about 47% are communication services. So that's gonna be internet related, 40% information technology, and then 11 and a half are consumer discretionary. So let's move on. I'm going to share with you some of the uh, better looking, certainly more appealing, not just technically, but also uh, fundamentally. There are growth prospects underlying. Uh, this is NetTees, N-T-E-S. We can see that this stock, very similar to the CQQQ, broke out of this nice two-month base. And it is very nicely pulling back, I would argue very orderly, still looks quite constructive. Uh, this company is a mobile game giant in uh, China. They did deliver explosive growth up to uh, 70%, but you like to see this pullback. This is very constructive 
as the stock resets for a potential another leg up. The company did come out with earnings earlier this month and uh, they were very strong, 28% year over year earnings, 24% above estimates. Another name that we can look at among these Chinese stocks uh, is an area that does tend to do well and this is EDU, New Oriental Education. They do, they're a private education and tutoring company. Although I'm sure you can note with me quite quickly how volatile, and that is definitely worth noting um, because if you are, uh, as most people would be disinclined to play this uh, volatility. But I did want to point it out to you simply because the RSI turned positive. This MACD is just now coming, uh, having that black line up through the red, so turning constructive. So um, you might want to keep your eye on that one. Let's take a look at YY, another Chinese ADR. They're all about live streaming entertainment. And I really wanted to point this out to you because in line with the broader markets, it did get a bit exuberant in here. Super high, uh, certainly for those of you with valuation concerns, but more uh, for me is price. It did get overbought. But again, we did have this very nice, uh, somewhat orderly pullback. And now the stock has regained its upside momentum. RSI is positive. Mac D is positive. Uh, if I didn't mention it, they're live streaming entertainment company. We're going to move over to a couple of uh, retail stocks, consumer discretionary. This one is very clearly uh, has already come out of the gate. They are a faster grower, uh, but very much in a confirmed uptrend. So at the very least, keep that on your radar. We can also take a look at Alibaba. This is another one that had a gap up here with a base breakout on big volume. We could see consolidation prior to another leg up. So let's take a look. I mentioned to you, we're gonna go into some of these recovery areas. So I want to go ahead into the sectors within the S&P 500. And uh, here we are with, let's take a look at the weekly one week move. And we're gonna drill down into industrial stocks, which are certainly not up here in the forefront, but a very decent 3% gain. And what I did wanna point out to you, and this is relevant to that Abbott, uh, I'm gonna crunch it all in here at the end, but uh, Abbott did announce that uh, actually it's not, it's in the works where the government will fund their rapid COVID test. And that is big news. So what we saw in response to that was a really big uptick in these recovery stocks, airlines, uh, a lot of the uh, cruise ships all picking up with thinking that we could see a move back into simply because the testing will be available uh, back into these stocks. I'm going to take us into diversified industrial. And what I also wanted to very quickly point out to you is the fact that some of your bigger winners in industrials were these lower scooter rated. And the reason I like diversified industrials is you'll, you'll get some nice larger cap names in here. So again, now we are looking at those stocks in the diversified industrial space. I like to sort that by scooter and then very quickly we're going to take a look at one stock here. This is SWK Stanley Black. Nice base breakout today. All about the construction uh, because they provide power tools. And then one other name is Eaton and I will leave it at that. That's sitting up here. A nice three and a half uh, yield percent yield for the stock. And uh, that's it for this week. Again, for those of you that have not taken a look at my MEMH report, use the link below, take a trial, and you can also view our track record and other interesting uh, information relating to that. Have a great weekend, everyone, and I will see you next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.